Hi, for this video we're going to look at level surfaces for a function of three variables. So the first thing we want to think about here is that for a function of three variables you're going to need three axes, x, y, and z, just to graph the inputs and then you would need a fourth axis, f of x, y, z, or maybe you'd call that the w axis, to graph the output. So that would be a four-dimensional graph and um, that would be pretty hard to draw or understand uh, because we're really used to working and thinking in three-dimensional space. Um, that doesn't mean that this function is not a valid sort of function. It could be a function that gives an output that may be a temperature or an electrical potential or any kind of numerical value at a point x, y, z in space. So it could be a function that's very practical applications. It just means that the graphical representation of the function starts to break down. When you get too many variables, you really can't just look at a picture and think about what's going on there. Um, but what we can do with a function like this is instead of looking at a graph of the whole function, uh, w equals f of x, y, z, we can basically look at sort of slices of the function. So those would be level surfaces. So those would be graphs of x, y, z where we have a constant output. So different specific constant outputs. And so we'll, what we'll see when we look at these graphs here is we'll find all of the x, y, z uh, that give us those specific constant outputs. All right, so um, before I start though, I'm gonna actually think about the domain of this function. Uh, so the domain would be some set of x, y, z values. And for this one, the restriction would be that we want the denominator to not be zero. So the only time that the denominator would be zero is when x, y, z is just the origin. So this is all of R3 except the origin would be the domain for this function. All right, and then when I think about level surfaces, I'm gonna choose different constant outputs for the function, and I'm gonna think about what the inputs for the function are gonna be. And so the easiest way to start thinking about that is essentially just positive, negative, and zero. Um, but if you think about this function, uh, we're never gonna have a negative output. No matter what you put in for x, y, and z, because you're squaring and adding on the denominator, uh, and then the numerator is just always one, we're never gonna have a negative output for this function. We're also never gonna have zero as an output for this function. The only way a fraction would be zero is if its numerator is zero and its denominator is not. So we're never gonna have any zero outputs for this function. So those things are really thinking about the range of the function, um, but when I choose these constant outputs, I need to think about what those constants might be that would be in the range of the function. All right, but we can have different positive values for outputs, so I'm just gonna choose a couple here, c equals one and c equals two, and then we're gonna think about those constant outputs for the function and what the inputs would be. All right, so I'm gonna put one for the output of my function, and then think about what the graph of that is. And so maybe I'll do a little bit of algebra rearranging. Multiply both sides by x squared plus y squared plus z squared. And so what I get is this sphere of radius one centered at the origin. And so what that would represent is all of the points in three space in R3 where the output of that function is one. All right, I'm also gonna think about when c equals two, I'll do that one in a different color over here. So we'll have two in for the output of the function. And then when I multiply both sides by x squared plus y squared plus z squared, I might also want to divide both sides by two. So I'll get x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals one half. So that one is a sphere with center at the origin. And this one has a radius of square root of one half or one over square root of two, or maybe you wanna rationalize that and think about that as square root of two over two, uh, but approximately 0.7 for the radius of that sphere. Okay, so when I think about the graphs of those, usually when we graph level curves, we maybe put graphs of several level curves on the same coordinate system. The difficulty with doing that with level surfaces is that you've already got three-dimensional graphs that you're trying to 
draw on a two-dimensional surface and now maybe you have more than one of them that you're trying to draw on this two-dimensional surface. So these ones are simple enough. Maybe I could go ahead and draw a couple. Sphere of radius one centered at the origin. I'm just going to do the cross sections that would be in the coordinate axes here and maybe put a little couple of contour lines there to make it look 3D. And then I would also have a sphere inside that. That would be the, I'm going to do the next one here in blue, a uh, sphere of radius one over square root of two. So inside that I would have another sphere of radius square root of two. Okay, so it become a little bit difficult to look at uh, kind of what's in front of what and what's uh, behind what when you've got multiple ones. So sometimes when you have level surfaces, you might want to do those uh, on different axes, but use the same scale. Um, so one of the things you want to kind of think about is what this represents. When I go from uh, all the points X, Y, Z that are on this first sphere that I drew here of radius one, uh, when I go from all the points that are on that, where my constant output of the function is one, when I move from that sphere, two points that are on the sphere of radius one over square root of two. So when I move from points on this outer sphere to points on this inner sphere, the, the output of the function has gone up, has gotten bigger. And so that might start to make you think about derivatives and thinking about when a function's increasing or decreasing. But in essence, when I go from these points that are on this sphere of radius one to the points that are on the sphere of radius one over square root of two, the output of the function has gone up by one unit right there. And so I might look at other spheres and think about, or other level surfaces, they would all be spheres for this one, and think about the distances that I would need to travel in order to get that output of that function to change by the same amount, by one unit. So looking at a whole sequence of level surfaces here could help you understand that. Okay, so try some problems with level surfaces, and then in the next video we're going to look at open, closed, bounded, and unbounded sets.